In this video, you will learn how to add a scheduled path to a record triggered flow in Salesforce and why it can be important to add this time delay. My name is Randy and I'm from Chargent. If you're a Salesforce admin or consultant who wants to learn about payments and be a superstar for your organization, then you're in the right place. Before we dive into building our flow, it's important to understand a little bit about the Salesforce order of execution and what it means when creating record triggered flows. When creating record triggered flows, you have the option of executing before or after the record is saved. This decision is your input into the order of execution. Today, we will be using the after save option. Wasn't that easy? The record saves and we let our flow do its thing. Uh, not so fast. While the record is saved, it's not yet committed to the database. And in the event any error occurs, Salesforce will roll back changes already made and abort the operation. Some examples of items that are in the order of execution for Salesforce that cause errors are validation rules, user security issues, or any number of things. Anytime one of these errors occurs, records will not be committed to the database. This is where a scheduled path can help. On the topic of being helpful, we've made a special checklist for you on 10 ways to make Salesforce payments safe, easy, and profitable. So check that link in the description below and download the checklist today. For today's example, let's create a record triggered flow on Chargent Transactions object that updates the stage on the opportunity when the payment is made. It's important to note that Chargent can be configured to work on any object. Here it's configured to work on the opportunity object. Head over to Salesforce Setup and search for flow in the quick find box. Click flows and then click the new flow button to get started. Let's select record triggered flow and use the auto layout. On the Configure Start page, select the Chargent Transaction object and configure it to trigger when a record is created. You'll likely want to set some entry conditions like when the transaction is approved or when the amount is paid in full. We're going to skip this step and focus on creating our scheduled path. In the Optimize the Flow section, choose Actions and Related Records and click Done. The default path is to run immediately. We want to add the optional scheduled path. We can give the path any label or API name we wish. Let's call the path zero hour delay and click tab to populate the API name. For the time source, let's select when the transaction is created with an offset number of zero and offset option of hours after. Click done and our new path appears. Using a zero hour delay will typically execute about one to two minutes after the record is committed to the database. Let's add an element to the new scheduled path. Click the plus sign and select update records. Let's label it update opportunity stage and then tab to populate the API name. Now select specify conditions to identify records and set fields individually, radio button. For the object, select opportunity. We only want the opportunity related to our charge and transaction, so let's add our filter criteria. Here we want to add the field opportunity ID to the equal the opportunity ID from the charge and orders opportunity lookup field. To find it, select the record from the global variables section, then select the related charge and order and related opportunity, and finally the opportunity ID. With the filter criteria set, let's set the field values for the opportunity record. Select stage name for the field and close one for the value and click done. Now let's save and activate our flow and see it in action. That's it. The flow starts when the transaction record is created, but the scheduled path doesn't run until after the record is committed to the database. If a validation rule prevented the opportunity from updating, the transaction record is already present, and while the opportunity won't update properly, we don't lose the data showing that the customer paid, which is arguably more important. Did you know that one of the most common questions we get in tech support is, can I automate that? It's one of the more common questions that the Chargent support team hears from our prospects and customers. And more often than not, the answer is yes. Chargent is native to Salesforce, allowing the use of Salesforce powerful automation tools like Flow, which are flexible enough to meet most use cases. Automation is a great way to reduce human errors, free up your staff to click less, and focus more on strategic activities that grow your business. In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to use a flow to auto-populate recurring billing fields on the charge in order. My name is Randy, and I'm from Chargent. If you're a Salesforce admin or consultant who wants to learn more about payments and be a superstar for your organization, then you're in the right place. In this example, our use case is a business that offers a monthly subscription. 
The subscription could be a wine club or a gym membership or a professional services subscription or, well, you know, you get the point. The sales team just got back from a great trade show where they carefully qualified leads and are following up with those contacts they didn't close at the show. The sales team is now going to send out a targeted email offer to those prospects. Two Chargent features really helpful in this use case are payment requests and recurring billing. Payment requests is an email link allowing the prospect to securely enter in their payment details online and make a payment. The payment request is one of Chargent's most popular features. It helps reduce PCI scope by adhering to the rule of see no card, hear no card, and touch no card. Plus, customers can self-serve, making a payment at their convenience. The other Chargent feature we can use is recurring billing, which allows payments to process automatically through a batch according to the specified frequency. We'll use Flow to combine these two great features through automation. One important thing you should know is that you can reduce your accounts receivable and collection challenges in Salesforce with Chargent. Learn how Chargent can make your failed payments or overdue collections process configurable and automated, saving you time and money. Download the guide now from the link in the description of this video. In this video, we assume that payment request is already configured. If you had not yet done that, stick around and we'll connect you to a great video that will walk you through this easy process. Let's review a little background about these features and objects in case you're not familiar. Payment request is a child object to the charge and order. Payment request record has a few different statuses, but the ones we are using today are created or paid. Once paid, the link is no longer active, which prevents customers from overpaying. The charge an order object is where the recurring billing fields and payment information are configured. You'll see how these two tie together as we move through the flow. In this video, we'll give a high level overview of the flow. We've included a companion document to give full step-by-step -step instructions in the description of the video for those who might want to build the flow. The flow we created is a record triggered flow, which as stated, launches when a record is created, updated, or deleted. This auto launch flow runs in the background. We use the payment request object as the object the flow is based off of. Like we mentioned above, this flow will trigger when the payment request changes from a status of created to paid. We optimize the flow for actions and related records, update any records, and perform actions. This more flexible flow runs after the record is saved to the database. We select this option so that we can follow the best practices to ensure our automation does not interrupt the Chargent order of execution. We want to let Chargent fully execute before we run automation on the same records that are being updated. The next step is to use the update records element in the flow. We will use the update records element to set the recurring billing fields on the Chargent order object. Next, we connect the start element and the update records element by creating a scheduled path. We want to create a scheduled path so we can follow best practices using a delay of one minute so that our flow does not interrupt the charge and order of execution. Next, we'll use another update records element in the flow. In this step, we are updating the transaction record created by the payment request to be marked as recurring so that our recurring batch will run according to the frequency we have configured on the charge and order. And the last step is to connect the two update records elements. Flow experts know to save their work throughout so they don't lose any of their work. Finally, make sure that you activate the flow. Before we go, let's quickly go see the flow in action. We will send ourselves a payment request using the charge in anywhere send payment request button from an opportunity record for $1 and process the request. Then navigate to the related charge in order and we can see that the recurring billing fields have been populated and the next transaction is set to the following month. We can then click into the transaction record and we see the recurring checkbox is checked. This great flow really cuts down on the workload of our sales team, so again, they can focus on selling rather than configuring records. We hope that you will take inspiration from this flow to create automation that works for your specific Chargent use case. Did you know you can save time by using Salesforce Flow to automate scheduled payments with Chargent? Whether you are brand new to Flows or Flow Fanatic, this video will show you how to do just that. My name is Robert and I am from Chargent. If you're a Salesforce admin or a consultant who wants to take advantage of automation, then you are in the right place. Speaking of automation, we have a guide that will give you tips on how to automate your accounts receivable collections, download using the link in the description below. If your business is based on subscriptions, you likely take payments when a customer buys and then begins recurring payments 
for the subscription. The one example is security provider whose customer buys a new security system and begins paying a monthly subscription fee once the system is activated. For our demo, we will assume an initial payment has been made and the customer security system has been activated. The installation tech now updates the opportunity to a close one, which will kick off our automation to begin recurring payments. Step one, creating and saving the flow. To get started, let's head over to Salesforce Setup and search for flow in the quick find box. Navigate to flow and click the new flow button to get started and select the record trigger flow. And finally, the create button. We need to set up the configure start screen to trigger when an opportunity object is updated with the stage name equals to close one. We only want this trigger when the record is updated to meet the conditions requirement. So let's select the option, leave the rest of the settings as is and click done. Before we continue, let's save our flow. I'll give it a name of opportunity close one, start recurring billing. You can add a short description and click save. Don't worry about the warning message. We'll add more to that flow now. But first, I want you to know that you can reduce your accounts receivable and collection challenges in Salesforce with charging. Learn how charging can save you time and money by making your payments configurable and automated. Download the guide using the link in the description of this video. Step two, get the existing charge and order. The first thing we will want to do is to get the charge and order from the initial payment. We will need to provide a label and API name along with the optional description. For the object, we will select charge and orders, then add our condition requirements. In our case, there should only be one charge and order related to the opportunity at this point. So let's simply filter based on the opportunity ID and only store the first record. Click done and then save the flow again. Step three, create variables. Before we jump straight to creating the new charge and order, Let's create a few variables to help us out later in the process. Click on the toggle toolbox icon and select the new resource. We will start by creating a data formula we can use to set the date our subscription payment should start. In this case, let's start them 30 days after the opportunity is won. Select formula as the resource type and give the resource an API name. For the data type, select date and in the formula box, enter today plus 30 and click done. Let's add one more resource, and this time with the resource type of variable and data type of number. Again, we will add an API name and enter 1999 in the default value field. Click done, toggle the toolbox out of the way, and let the fun begin. Step four, create the new charge and order. With all our pre-work complete, we're now ready to create the new charge and order that will collect recurring subscription payments each month. Go ahead and click save again and add another node to create a new record. You know the drill, enter value into the label and API name fields. Then select use separate resources and literal value radio button. Once again, we will select charge and order as our object. Next up, we need to set field values for the charge and order. With the exception of the variables we created and a few values we will set values for directly on the screen. Most of the data comes from our initial charge and order. We will need to set the account and opportunity ID, gateway, billing information, payment information, and finally set up our recurring billing information. For the payment information, be sure to copy the token, payment method, card type, card last four, and expiration month and year. Flow will not allow you to copy encrypted data, so we map the expiration month and year indicator values to the encrypted expiration month and year fields. If you're collecting bank account information, you will want to include those fields as well. For our recurring billing information, we will need to set the payment status as recurring, payment frequency as monthly, payment stop as unending, and payment start date with the formula we created earlier. Finally, we will set manual charge checkbox to true and the charge amount field with the variable we created earlier. And there we are. Click done and save our flow. Step five, testing the flow. You can use the built-in run and debug tools to ensure your flow is working as expected, but for the sake of time, let's activate and test our flow. Here you can see we have an opportunity with an initial payment already made. Let's update our opportunity stage and see what happens. Perfect. A new charge and order was created as expected. 
ready to start collecting payments next month. And now that you know how to automate scheduled payments, check out this video where you'll learn more about payments in Salesforce using Chargent. My name is Robert and I am from Chargent where we are dedicated to helping you make Salesforce payments simple. And remember, we're always here to help.